Good day, everyone. So we thought Nick and I had sort of got together and we thought we would look at distance casting from the perspective of increasing distance in increments. So we'd start off by looking at 50, to, going from 50 to 70 feet. And then in this episode, and then in future episodes, we'll go from 70 feet to 100, which is a big mile mark for a lot of people. And then we will look at 110 to 115. And then we will look at 120 foot plus. And then if Nick eats his Weetabix in the morning, we'll look at 130. How are you, Nick? <laughs> I'm very good, thanks, Paul. How are you? Looks very, uh, very hot there. <laughs> oh, we've got a bit of cloud cover. So hopefully we don't get a storm. And hopefully, hopefully you don't get a storm either. On. <laughs> it's looks looks all right for now so i think we'll see we'll see how it goes mate on there so all righty yeah. so what do you want to start off with well let well let's start off to, let's talk about the tackle that you're using there yeah okay so for practice i just use my normal fishing rod um happens to be nine foot long and for the line, I've done something a little bit different today. Usually I use the MED, but I've got the Ballistic Pro Performance five weight line. So I like using five weight lines to practice because if I go any higher, um, like a six or a seven, if I've got a tiny tracking fault or something, it tends to it tends to hide that. So I like to go down to see if there's a problem and then gradually increase. But for the for the five weight, um, I think it's just a good, it's just a nice practice line because that's what I use in competition as well. Um, leader, so I've got a three meter leader on here just for a little bit of um, standardization. So that's the needle knot on there, just a tapered leader that I've, that I've made by knotting different sections together. And then at the end, I have a bit of egg yarn. Yeah. So and it's what, just wool. What are the what's the taper and the leaders? How what what does it go from and to? Uh, so this is a 60 20 20 ratio leader. And on this it starts at 35, 35 pounds, which is maxima. And you can tell if you've uh done it nicely and matched the, the butt section to the fly line because it makes a nice it makes a nice curve. So can't remember <laughs> the maths off the top of my head, but I got the tape measure and then split it up. But yeah, it's 60% butt section, 20% taper, and then 20% tippet on the end of that. And the tippet on there is terminating in 10 pounds. So it's a 10 pounds tippet on the end of that. So it's just okay. a nice little, just a nice little practice, just a nice little practice leader, really, for this. Okay, great. So we we were talking about this earlier and we think probably the keys for somebody casting from you know 50 from going from 50 to going up to 70 feet is probably mostly about the loop. It's about having good loop control um and being able to double haul obviously so it becomes really important at this at this point too i mean it's possible to cast 70 feet without double haul but you're, you're working hard to do it so so we're really going to start to look at we're going to talk about the back loop and, and the forward loop really so maybe we should want to start with that so this is um well we call this the triangle method which lee cummings named and it's sort of a combination between what Jane Wolf does and Bill Gamble does. It's about forming it's about forming nice tight loops backwards and forwards. Tape measures are really good because it gives you a it gives you a line to cast along. And it's called a triangle method pretty much because the stopping position and the finishing position of the rod and uh, the line that the rod tip follows, which is that line there that you can see that actually makes a triangle. So if we start with about a rod length of line, a fly line outside the rod tip first, the, the aim of the game is to get consistent loops backwards and forwards along this line. I'm just going to wind some line in because we don't need 
all of this line. So yeah, so the aim of the game is to get consistent loops both backwards and forwards. And we don't want the loop width, which is on here. So that's the gap between the fly leg, which is at the top, and the rod leg. We don't want that any wider than three feet. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, two or three feet. You can make, with a very short line, you can make it very tight. So, yeah. So, so I think the easiest way for this is to angle the rod about 45 degrees upwards. Safety tip as well. Make sure that the wind is behind you, so it's blowing this way. And it's not only for safety as well, it's important because then it affects both loops equally. If you have a wind coming from one side, you have to use more force to get it into the wind. So with the wind behind you, you can use equal force backwards and forwards to get nice, consistent, repeatable loops. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the line down on that side and we're going to start at one end of the triangle is that all right there paul yep that's good and what we're going to do is we're going to get very tight loops so we're going to track it along this tape measure so we're going to raise the rod to 45 degrees i'm going to get try and get some nice consistent loops so there we go we're just going to go consistent loops both backwards and forwards and once we're happy with that, we're going to add a meter of line and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. And I'm going to repeat, making sure that we get consistent loops, both backwards and forwards. Additionally, you need to use a tighter casting arc if the loops are too wide. So think more of an isosceles triangle rather than an equilateral triangle. One of the challenges I think is bring that side cast up to the vertical. Uh, it, 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 is, it is quite difficult because it is a different position of the body that we use. So Yes. Okay, so once we've got our nice loops at 45 degrees and we're facing, we're facing the loops now, so we're facing head on so what's nice to do is to face to your left if you're right-handed keep casting and then just bring it up into the vertical plane and then what's a nice drill as well whoops hit the camera there sorry What's nice to do as well is to bring it back down whilst you're standing like this. And it just gets people used to bringing it off like that, I think. I think that's a, that's a, nice, way of, that's a nice way of doing it. I don't know what you think, Paul. Yeah, I think that's very good. And I think the important thing is to turn the body first, just like you demonstrated, is to, is to go from that side position and go into your forward facing position and then pick it up. So there are largely two ways we can apply force to the stroke, force during the stroke. Um, one is to apply the force throughout the stroke, which means we are basically rotating the rod from the beginning of this stroke all the way through to the end. And we use that for accuracy. So I'll show you from this angle here. If I'm rotating all the way through the stroke, from the, uh, with the if I'm rotating the rod all the way through the stroke, um it's very different to saving the rotation for the end towards the end of the stroke and by that i mean we're going to we're going to keep this rod angle pretty much the same the same the same the same and then we're going to apply the force through a rotation and we actually have a term for that the term we use is drag Drag is a modified beginning of the casting stroke where we keep this angle the same or some small rotation. And then at the end we do, the, that's where the rotation happens. That to me is drag. So it's either the same or a little bit of rotation. I think it should really be a little bit of rotation. And then when we get to the end, when we're gonna to apply torque to the rod, we're going to, we're going to apply that force through by turning the rod butt over. 
And that is that is one of the key elements to distance is modifying how you apply force. And it also helps um, stopping the problem of applying the force from the beginning. When we go for distance, the force isn't at the start of the stroke, it's at the end of the stroke. This is, so our rotation is there at the end of the stroke. So that's, that's um, we call that delayed rotation. Um, we call that component where, where it's mostly translation. We call that drag. And, and that is one of our keys to distance casting. And the timing of, of the double haul should really happen during the final moments of rotation. So on that back cast, we're going to flip the wrist and that's when we're going to haul, whack, through that, through that wrist flip. And then on the forward cast, and you can do what I've just done there and put the line on the ground, you're going to drag forward, drag forward. And then when you're going to rotate, when you're going to apply the force on the forward with that rotation, that's it's, it's not going to work because it's on the water. That's when you haul. Okay. So it's there. Okay. Bang. So one of the easiest fail-safe methods of learning the double haul is, is to use this, what we call this triangle method, this side casting. Um, and it, it's life-changing. You must learn the double haul. It's like the difference between walking and running. You, you, you really need to, to share this, the, the work between the body. And it does so much more. It tightens up the loop. It gives you more line speed. Um, you know, it, it really is the secret to longer cast, having a nice, smooth, fast, effective double haul. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this triangle method on the side and I'm going to show you probably the I think the easiest way to learn this to, to learn this double haul, and we're going to use go by numbers. This is this is learning by numbers, and we're going to so we're going to lift the line off the water, and then we, when we make our back cast, we're going to make number one, and number one is we're going to haul, we're going to pull this line through the rings, which is why it works. It di directly increases line speed, so that's number one. Number one. And the time, as far as I'm concerned, the best time to apply this, this haul is not at the start of the casting stroke, but about midway through it. So when that, if I, where the center line here, when my rod passes that center line, that's when I'm gonna haul the second part of the casting stroke. So come up one, and then just put the line on the ground. So here together, one, okay, one. And then when you've got a feeling for that, you can go one, two. So there's one small pause and then up to two. So one, two. Don't rush to get your hands back together because that can introduce slack line. So it's one, two. And you can follow the line as it's unrolling. You can watch it and you can just lift your hand back up too. So to bring these hands back together. So hands apart, hands together. So it's one, two. I'll do it at this angle so you can see it. I'm going to go one, two. And notice how there's no lots of slack line there. If you're getting slack line, it could be that your line is dirty. It could, um, so you can clean your line. Um, or it could be that your loops are too open. That's a very common cause. Sometimes, something we do in competition is we turn these rod rings off at an angle. We offset them from the reel. And I, turn, I personally, I turn them, um, what's that, anti-clockwise out to about 45 degrees. So my rings are all here. And I fish that. I fished like that for over 20 years. Certainly not a problem um, at all. Now, some people, Nick, I believe, he goes in at 90. Okay, so he's inside. I'm, I'm, I like to go out a little bit, 45. But it doesn't matter which way you go, I don't think. But what really matters is that having these rings offset stops the line running along the blank and getting stuck. And, and that's particularly important on that double haul upward movement 
that you don't want the line stuck along the rod. So back to back to the numbers. So we're going to go one, two, and then when we make our forecast, getting past this perpendicular, three. Yeah, you can, you can hold to your stomach unless you're really, you know. So one, two, three. Okay, do it again. One, two, three, five. Okay. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, five. And if you can make up the, 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 the downward part quite quick. One, two, three, five. One, two, uh, three, five. One, two, three, five. Okay. And then we can just pick that up. Look for, as I say, look for the slack line here, forming between this hand and this butt ring. There's no slack when I'm doing it here. You don't want that forming nice and smooth. And this is your double horn. It should be nice and relaxed. When you've got it, the line hand is controlling everything. And for distance, what we really want is we want to haul to a straight arm. Bang, bang. Here, here. Personally, I haul from the chest on the back cast and from the shoulder on the forward cast. Here. <laughs> okay. Back to you, Nick. Cheers, Paul. As you say, the down up motion, it can introduce slack line. And you can try this yourself. You can actually shoot line on the back cast. And you'll notice that the shoot doesn't happen straight away it, the, the loop has to it, it needs time to form before it shoots so that's good so we've got a back loop and a forward loop we've got some loop consistency there uh we've sped it up with the double haul um i think now we i think now we're going to look at maybe I, I think the keys now really is to talk about line carry because because the amount of line we can shoot is proportional to the amount of line we can carry and I think yep. we did some measurements last time. I can't remember what we came up with, but to cast 75 feet, we need to have a certain amount of length in the line and in the air in the back cast. Can you remember what it was? 50, 55 feet with a long belly double taper type line. All was, right. So that um, means so that was that that was 55 feet to the line hand, wasn't it? Yes, a carry, yes, yeah, so a 55 okay. foot that I'm holding. So from my line hand to the end of the fly line not including the leader the number that we often throw around is about half isn't it? it's about half what you're carrying i know that's not right and depends on the line and pens and a whole bunch of other things but it is important to understand that if you haven't got enough line in the air in the back cast it doesn't matter how much line you speed out put out what's actually going to happen is the loop is going to unroll before it's carried the distance that we want so one of the things we have to work on is extending the amount of line that we've got in our back cast and the way to do that, I think, maybe we can talk a little bit about how to make a better back cast. I know a lot of people say don't use your wrist when you're casting, but when you have a nice controlled wrist, then it gives you a much, it gives you a much nicer, it gives you a much nicer feeling and a much nicer, a much lot nicer loop, I think, by casting like that. Totally bizarre that somebody will tell you not to use your wrist when casting because they wouldn't say that if you were throwing a stone on the you know on your forward cast you know you, the, the wrist is the final movement and then why on earth would why has it got around that we don't use the wrist on the back cast and i simply think it's a misunderstanding of how the body works it's actually a problem the problem isn't too much wrist the problem actually was too much arm movement and if we can minimize the arm movement we can maintain the wrist i think that's really where that's come from but i think you need to use your wrist when you're casting to get you a more efficient efficient stroke so i talk about breaking as in uh, like you know not as in breaking as in b r e k but b r a k i n g breaking the breaking the forearm to allow the wrist to flip over and then it's going to be quite relaxed to do that and i think that's a much more efficient use of using the body to get the speed coming from the wrist as opposed to trying to generate that speed from the elbow um particularly on both back and forward cast, but on that back cast to break that forearm and then to allow the wrist to flip over 
And if we can time that wrist flip with the haul, then we that that's going to generate our in, within that technique that's going to generate our highest back cast speeds. With the triangle method, you're doing all your practice the same, and then you're thinking, okay, then we'll try this, and then you can gradually build it up and up and up, and then you can you can you can finish with letting the line line land on the ground behind you. I think it's Jason Borger that goes only back cast, only forward cast. You'll probably be able to mm. steer me in the right direction. That's what I think that's what he calls it in his new book. Um, so you can just concentrate on getting this nice delivery. And to be honest, if you've got the head out of the rod, you can chuck a whole line doing that, just laying it around and then just um, rotating at the end. So it goes, so it just, it just, um, allows you just to ingrain this nice movement of of uh, what 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 we call drag and then late rotation or translation and then late rotation at the end actually it's a good it's a good point because if you can if you can do it off the ground and most people can it's a good test if they can do it off the ground and they can't do it in the air then it actually indicates there's a, there's a problem with the transition between back and forward cast it's not actually a problem with the forward cast not if the, it might be a problem with the back cast, but it's definitely a problem with the transition. Actually, slipping line, and then shoots to seventy feet. Actually, that might have been sixty-nine feet and eleven inches, Paul. So I'll do that again. <laughs> so reaching forward, getting all the slack out, get your carry up to. 50 feet and then shoot to 70 on there. Okay, so I'm going to show you my 70 foot cast now. Very similar to Nick, I think. Um, I only, I think about a few things here. I always think if there's two targets, we've got that target behind us, it's that imaginary bell that we've got to ring, ding. And then I really looking to set a nice, set a nice loop. There, nice, nice loops forming, and then I'm going to add line speed with the haul. Okay, that's really when you really get into the hauling, it's your left hand is controlling the timing and 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 uh, and the speed of the cast really. So everything's nice and square. There's my target out there at 70 feet. Bang. Bit of the load rotation at the end. Well, to be honest, if you if you if you do it nice and efficiently, it will go over seventy feet. It'll probably go eighty. So, I think yeah. That's nice I mean, I mean to get it to go to get it to go further, what all we're going to really do is work on those on those simple elements, really. Initially, at least, just adding more line speed and more and more carry with a tight loop, and not necessarily more force, but just better timing and the fast haul. You know, the fast haul is really key. Um, you know, particularly, I, th I think it's really important to haul, for distance anyway, it's important to haul to a straight arm. I think that's a big tra transition for a lot of people to learn to fully straighten this arm on both back and forward cast. But I know we're going to talk a lot more about that in the next in the next episode because it becomes even more important. All these things become important, so we'll get a bit more involved. Definitely. Cheers, mm -hmm. Paul. Well, I think we'll uh, we'll stop it there, and then we'll do the hundred foot, the hundred right. well over over hundred foot next. I think. Yeah, we'll be, be casting, we'll be casting seventy feet this week and hundred feet next week. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Cheers, Paul. Uh, I'll I, see you on the I'll see you on the next video. See you on the other side. All right, mate. Take it easy. Thanks. <laughs>